stretching the glutes or showing the socks? That's the real question today. It is Sunday, April 26th, a day before. I'm not going to tell you what's happening tomorrow, but still 26 it is another episode of our homework workouts. And today we'll do a movement that we've done tons of times, but then 2.0 version. So we're going to make the jumping jack very, very tough and interesting in today's workout. So let's get started. What you need is a set of bottles and a band. Why? Otherwise it's going to be very hard to start in this warm up. Okay. We're going to have three movements in total. I'm going to have Jeremy and Sval showing you the movements and providing you with options for injuries. And if it's too difficult to do, we'll show you what to do as well. Now we're going to start off with the bottles and we're going to warm the shoulders with some front races all the way to overhead. Let's have a look. Let's call them Arnold front races because I know he did it. If you guys look at pumping iron, you will see. Here we go. So we start from the front of the body, we raise all the way to overhead. Now the funny thing here is guys, this is very easy to get a bottle overhead and then arching the hell out of your back because that makes it easier. I do want you to focus on squeezing your belly when you go overhead. That does mean that you might not get as far as you want to go, but you are training proper positioning and alignment of the joints on top of each other. So we're stacking properly and that is exactly the thing that we're aiming for here. So I think they've done like 15 or 20 reps already and you only have to do 10 in the workout or in the warm up. So we're good now. Um, quick side note, if you're injured and you can't go all the way to overhead, I do want you to do the front raise and go to a position where you can go without hurting yourself. Side note. Now, second movement with the band is you're going to cross loop the band like Jeremy's doing. Would you like to see where that's good. You go sit on the floor with the band wrapped around the knees. There we go, solid. Then while we're on the floor, we need to find tension in the band. So what we'll do is we're gonna position our feet at a width that allows us to press our knees into the band while we maintain tension. And then we're going to just do a regular glute bridge here. Good, reset down. Now while you're doing these glute bridges, you're going to force your knees into the band and this helps you find your glutes even more. That's why we use the band as assistance here, or as resistance actually. That's the right word. Very good. Now you're trying to fold your hips around your belly button. So you're not arching, because arching does not tax the glute that much, it taxes the lower back a bit too much, and you don't want to have that happen. If you look at Swallow, he's perfectly pressing his heels into the floor with his toes off to make sure his squats are not taking over all the work. Hi, good guys. Band and glute bridges. If you feel very simple, that it is too heavy for you to use that band looped around the knees. Guess what you're gonna do? Get rid of the band. That's a good one. All right, our third movement. We're gonna go into a regular plank first with the wrist position right underneath the shoulders. Let's go, buddy. Yes, now from here, and they're gonna start slow with the right hand. They're gonna point the right hand to the left foot in an A-frame, then they're gonna reach back into the plank, set up the plank, and then go to the other side. And now they're going to alternate reps here. It doesn't have to be very fast. And if you look at them, what they're doing very well here is every time they come back forward, they actually go back to the real plan. They never stay in that A-frame. And I do want you to make this a dynamic movement where you alternate, go back and forth, go left and right, go from A-frame to plank. A-frame, toe touches, ladies and gentlemen. At home, I hope you're also practicing the movements right now because it is time to get ready and put them into action. Time to get started. We just showed you all the movement. You're in now. You get off the couch, you grab your bottles. It is eight minutes of a quality MRAP. Don't go too fast, right? Get your band and bottles ready and follow us along. Guys, if you're ready, we're gonna start with 10 bottle races to overhead in three, in two, in one, and let's go. Guys, good movie tip. I think we should do this as well, is looking at watching Pumping Iron like every day for a week long. It's very inspiring and you'll learn lots and lots of these movements. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, you gotta Google this, bro. You gotta Google this. Then, bottles, front raises overhead. Put the bottles down. You take the band. You loop the band. You put it along the knees or across the knees. You go on the floor in your bridge position and you start working the glute bridge here. So always make sure the band is gonna pull you in, the knees pulled in, and you're gonna just fight that pulling in motion. By doing that actively, you're firing the glutes even more than just with the glute bridge. It really helps you perform better in the movement. Very good, guys. There we go. And today actually has a lot of glute work involved also in the actual workout later on. So upon completion, you're gonna go to their plank, you're gonna start doing their A-frame toe touchers, alternating the repetitions, 
and focusing on holding a strong core when you reach down into the plank. You brace your belly, then you reach. It is an active way of warming up the back of the body with the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back. But also getting some plank action in and challenging the core in different ways by moving back and forth. So we're a good minute and a half in. They've both completed their round. That means you guys have probably another four rounds to do. So continue and press pause. All you need for the second part is your SmartWatt app or whatever app you've been using the last couple of weeks as a timer. Okay, you want to set it at eight intervals of 40 seconds of work and then 20 seconds to transition from one movement to the other. Right? The eight intervals are going to be two rounds of left and right with the legs, left and right with the arms. Repeat. Makes sense. Svall and Jeremy are go both going to show you the movements with slightly different variations in there because of level difference or flexibility difference. I'm going to set the timer and at home the question is, are you going to do this with us? Yes or no? I'll give you the answer. It's yes. So we start with our left leg across in three, two, one, let's go. So we have our left leg pressed against our right leg, so against the knee of the right leg, and we're actively pressing the knee away from the body and then we're going to let it come in a bit and we press it away from the body and we're going to let it come in a little bit and we do this for 40 seconds so normally you can also do this by just holding it in position which is fine by me but i like to throw in dynamic stuff when i'm preparing for a workout and i like to do static stuff after a workout so you can do all of these stretches again after the workout but then just do it more passively okay we have three two one Rest, so 20 seconds of rest. I want Swal and Jeremy to already set up the other side so you guys at home can actually check what they're doing. So Jeremy has his leg on the floor, Saw has his leg in the air. Leg on the floor is easier when you have more restricted mobility and leg on makes it a bit tougher. We're starting again in three, in two, in one. You guys can start again. So press the knee away and let it slowly come in. That is good. So the idea is with the dynamic stretching is that you try to increase range of motion over the course of time or repetitions in this case would also be good, right? So you slowly build up how far you press that knee away from the body. That's good. And she, Jeremy's actually having a big difference with the left and the right leg as well. If you know that, you can always, for example, do an additional set on the side that is um, less flexible than the other. We got five more seconds and then you need to find a wall, guys at home as well, a wall or a pole. All right, let's switch. Let's go to the wall. Let's start with the left arm, gentlemen. We're gonna press the left arm right into the wall at approximately shoulder height. And in 10 seconds, we're gonna simply just reach down from the wall. Five, four, three, two, one. Now what I would like to see here, and I'm gonna tell them that right now, is they're gonna switch between being extremely passive in their core, so just reaching and hanging down completely, and then suddenly bracing their abs very hard and pressing their arm into the wall while reaching down. You change the stretch from lat to more upper back and you guys keep switching between that. So completely relax, hang in, hang in, hang in, and then squeeze as hard as you can for a couple of seconds. And when you do that dynamic stuff, you do an end position for three to five seconds and then you do the relaxed position for three to five seconds. You get 10 more seconds and then we switch. Very good guys, very good. All right, three, two, one. Let's statically set up the next one so people at home can watch. Good, so Jeremy has a stagger stance, Paul has his feet next to each other, they're both fine. In 10 seconds we start again. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So at home as well, try to switch between actively bracing and actively tension the core and pressing into the wall and completely relaxing and just hanging down. When you do a regular wall stretch, it's also nice to switch between the two. So if you don't brace, you'll get more of a lower back lat stretch. If you do brace very hard, you'll get more of an upper back T-spine to thoracic spine stretch. And switching between the two can be very good. It can also help you target the right muscles or the right limitations. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. Rest. That was one round, so four intervals. There are four more intervals left. Good luck. You guys are going to continue on this one and press pause.
Shoulders, glutes, and core work. That's what we're gonna do today. Now, the first of the three movements that we have in a workout, actually four movements, but we'll show you that in a second, is going to be your jumping jack. But like I said in the introduction, it's gonna be a hell of a different jumping jack today. It'll be a weighted jumping jack, and you're gonna use your bottles to swing with you overhead. And this is, it might look funny, but it's a very tough movement to do because the shoulders are gonna do lots of movement with additional loading. Great, so let's have a look at the weighted jumping jack. So they're both holding the bottles. We're gonna just get into the jumping jack rhythm. We're gonna take the bottles with them. There you go. So you're actually doing a, let's call it a cheating side raise to overhead while doing the jump as well. And now it might look easy, but if you do this for a minute straight, it'll become very, very tough. Let's rest, guys. Now, we discussed what to do with injuries and we had a very simple one. That is, if you cannot jump, you are going to load the shoulders and you're gonna just do quick races in a big range of motion with the bottles. And I do want you to keep the tempo Jeremy has. So you're gonna go for light bottles and very quick tempo. Another thing that might happen is you cannot go overhead, but you can jump. Then we do, let's call them half ass loaded jumping jack. Let's do half last loaded jumping jack, good. Yeah, rhythm is hard here. There we go. Nice buddy, let's rest. So these are the options for the loaded or weighted jumping jack. We now move on to alternating abduction walks. We do this standing in one spot. If you have a very long living room or you have an alley that is uh, about 10 meters long, which is good if you're a big home, then you can do this one walk and we'll do it in spots. So setting this up, the band is looped around the knees. You don't want it to slip up too much. You're going to go into a quarter squat. So sit your butt down just a tiny bit. Try to keep your toes to point forward. And we're going to step out with the right. Keep tension. You're gonna step in with the left and we're gonna keep tension and we're gonna step back. Left, right in. Now the idea here while they're keeping going here is they keep tension on the band throughout and keep that slight knee and slight hip bend throughout doing the repetitions. This is gonna set your butt on fire, which is exactly what we need. That's why we don't count reps here. No, 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 no. We do this for a full minute in the workout. That's what's up. Now let's take a break here and let's have a look at our third movement for this little workout piece here, which will be the cross V up. So let's get on the floor. Let's start in a hollow type of movement here. And small first, Jeremy, you can rest for a bit, is going to show you the cross V up. You're going to create a regular V up, but you're going to cross on the way up. So one leg comes up and both arms, which you're going to reach with the opposite arm to the other leg. Good core exercise, but also a beautiful way of working the obliques properly. Now Jeremy's going to show you the skilled variation, which we call a cross tuck up in this case. So let's go, Jeremy. Same option, he's going to get the legs bended and the arms straight, still moving from shoulder blades off the floor into that cross tucked position. Now let's show you our fourth movement. That was it. Four minutes, four rounds. Interval timer set at 16 rounds of a minute. Three minutes of work, one minute of the rest. You go for as much quality work as you possibly can. I wouldn't worry about counting anything. I would just go for a big bump here, right? Let's get started. You guys start with us. Get off your couch and join us on this one. Grab your bottles, take a sip, and we start in three, two, one. Let's go. One minute of jumping jacks with additional loading. Now, rhythmic, this will be very hard to do. As long as you have something that works, you just go for it. Make sure legs go from narrow to wide and arms go from sides to overhead. That is all we're looking for. Now, since there's no transition time here in these movements or in between these movements, you can either stop at like 50 or 55 seconds. So you have some time to set the bottles down and get the bands to go around the knees. Although this looks like just a jumping jack, I know that the shoulders are probably slowly starting to burn here. And that is exactly what we need. So we have how long? 20 seconds left in this interval. So I want them specifically to stop with the last 5 seconds left to set up the bands. So you got 15 seconds. We've got 10 more seconds at home as well. 5 seconds. So let's get that band set up and we switch in 3. Two, one, next interval is on. So slight knee bend, slight hip bend. That's the score of the quarter squat. Step out, step in, and remain tension on that band. That's all we're looking for. We wanna have tension on the band. Make it interesting by sitting a slightly bit deeper into that squat, but then when you do that, shuffle your hips back 
So your knees stay on the ankle, which is great for this abduction walk here. Great way of firing the glutes, guys. You can also do this before squatting type of workouts, or as a finisher of squatting type of workouts, or just every other day. Or every day. It's all good. You can just do that. We got 20 more seconds left. I know they're trying to look happy, but they're burning as fuck now in the butt, which is good. I right, 10 more seconds before we move on to the floor for one minute of cross videos. And three. Two, one, let's break. Oh, that must feel good. Now we go to the floor, and a minute of this unbroken will be very tough to do, but trying to do this for a minute with a couple of breaks, that would be nice. There we go. Solid, guys. So if you know you have to take breaks in a movement like this, that is all good and it's even understandable, but do try to keep the breaks very, very short and keep the sets big. So we're 30 seconds into the third interval and 30 seconds left to go. Since the minute after this will be complete rest, you're also able to push it a bit harder in this one. It will be rest anyways. 20 seconds, come on. At home as well, if you're resting right now, I want you to start because it's 10 more seconds till the end. Let's go guys, 10 more seconds till the end. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Now let's stand up and let's actively rest. <laughs> Continue. Press pause.